The email from an anonymous source caught my eye as I was sifting through the usual flood of messages in my inbox. Unexplained disappearances in Whispering Pines, North Carolina, the subject line read. As a true crime podcaster always on the lookout for my next story, I couldn't resist clicking on it. The message was short but intriguing. The sender claimed that over the past few years, several people had vanished without a trace in the small Appalachian town of Whispering Pines. The local authorities had been unable to find any leads, and the cases had gone cold. The tipster believed there might be a serial killer on the loose. I leaned back in my chair, my mind already racing with the possibilities. I had covered my fair share of unsolved mysteries on my podcast, Shadows in the Dark, but something about this case felt different. Call it intuition or just a hunch, but I knew I had to investigate. A few days later, I found myself driving along a winding mountain road, the lush green forests of North Carolina stretching out on either side of me. As I passed the weathered wooden sign welcoming me to Whispering Pines, population 1,437, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was about to uncover something truly sinister. I pulled up to the Whispering Pines Motor Lodge, a quaint, slightly run-down establishment that would be my home base for the duration of my stay. The receptionist, a friendly middle-aged woman named Donna, greeted me with a warm smile as I checked in. What brings you to our little town, Miss Ellis? She asked, handing me my room key. I hesitated for a moment, not wanting to reveal too much about my investigation. Just looking for some inspiration for my writing, I lied, forcing a smile. I've heard the area is beautiful. Donna nodded, her eyes crinkling at the corners. Oh, it sure is. But be careful if you go wandering in the woods alone. There are stories, you know. Stories about things that lurk in the shadows. A chill ran down my spine at her words, but I tried to shake it off. I thanked Donna and made my way to my room, already making a mental list of the people I needed to interview. Little did I know, the shadows in the dark would soon become all too real. The next morning I woke up early, eager to start my investigation. I had a list of names and addresses of the families of the missing persons provided by my anonymous tipster. My first stop was the home of Laura and Tom Benson, whose 19-year-old daughter, Emily, had vanished six months ago. Laura greeted me at the door, her eyes red-rimmed and haunted. She invited me in, and we sat down in the living room, where photos of Emily adorned the walls. Tom joined us, his face etched with grief. Emily was such a bright girl, Laura said, her voice trembling. She had just started college and had her whole life ahead of her. And then, one day she just disappeared. Tom nodded, his jaw clenched. The police searched for weeks, but they never found a trace of her. It's like she vanished into thin air. I listened intently, jotting down notes. A pattern began to emerge as I interviewed more families. All the missing people were last seen near the vast forests that surrounded the town. The authorities had searched the woods but found no clues. As I made my way through the list of interviewees, I couldn't help but notice the fear that seemed to grip the town. People spoke in hushed whispers glancing over their shoulders as if they were being watched. It was clear that the disappearances had taken a toll on the tight-knit community. My last stop of the day was the local police station, where I hoped to speak with the officer in charge of the investigations. 
Sheriff Harding, a gruff, no-nonsense man in his fifties, agreed to meet with me, albeit reluctantly. I'll be honest with you, Miss Ellis, he said, leaning back in his chair. We've hit nothing but dead ends. No bodies, no evidence, no leads. It's like these people just disappeared off the face of the earth. I pressed him for more information, but he remained tight-lipped. As I left the station, I couldn't shake the feeling that the sheriff wasn't telling me everything. Later that evening, as I sat in my motel room, reviewing my notes and recordings, I found myself drawn to the window. The sun was setting over the mountains, casting long shadows across the parking lot. For a moment, I thought I saw a flicker of movement in the trees beyond, but when I looked closer, there was nothing there. I shook my head, trying to dismiss the uneasy feeling that had settled in the pit of my stomach. But as I turned back to my notes, I couldn't help but wonder if there was something more to these disappearances than met the eye. The next day, I decided to take a different approach. I had heard whispers about a local legend, something to do with a creature that supposedly haunted the woods. I figured it was just a tall tale, but I was curious nonetheless. I made my way to the Whispering Pines Library, a small, unassuming building nestled between the town hall and the post office. The librarian, a kind-eyed elderly woman named Mrs. Jameson, greeted me with a smile. I'm looking for information on local legends, I said, leaning against the counter. Specifically, anything about a creature in the woods? Mrs. Jameson's smile faltered and she lowered her voice. You mean the wampus cat? I nodded, intrigued. She led me to a small section in the back of the library, where dusty tomes on local history and folklore lined the shelves. She pulled out a weathered book and handed it to me. The legend of the wampus cat goes back centuries, she explained. They say it's a creature that's half woman, half cat, cursed to roam the forests for all eternity. Some believe it's a spirit, others say it's a monster. But one thing's for sure, those who cross its path are never seen again. I poured over the book, fascinated by the stories of the wampus cat. As I read, I couldn't help but notice the similarities between the legend and the recent disappearances. Could there be a connection? Over the next few days, I continued my investigation, but strange things started happening. One night, as I was walking back to my motel room, I heard a rustling in the bushes behind me. I spun around, my heart racing, but there was nothing there. Just the wind whistling through the trees. Another day, I returned to my car after an interview to find deep scratches along the side, as if something had clawed at the paint. I tried to convince myself it was just a stray branch, but the marks looked too deliberate, too precise. The most unsettling incident occurred late one night as I was going over my notes in my motel room. A loud thump against my window startled me, and when I looked up, I saw a pair of glowing eyes staring back at me from the darkness. I blinked, and they were gone, but the image was seared into my mind. I began to wonder if I was losing my grip on reality. The rational part of my brain told me that the wampus cat was just a myth, a story told to frighten children. But the more I investigated, the more I felt like I was being drawn into something beyond my understanding. I needed answers, and I knew I wouldn't find them alone. It was time to seek out someone who had been down this road before someone who might be able to shed light on the dark mystery that had ensnared me. I had heard rumors about a retired sheriff who lived on the outskirts of town, 
a man named Bill Hawkins. He had been involved in the early investigations into the disappearances but had abruptly retired a few years ago. Some said he had gotten too close to the truth, that he had seen things that had driven him to the brink of madness. I tracked down his address and drove out to his secluded cabin, nestled deep in the woods. As I approached the front door, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I knocked, and after a few moments, the door creaked open, revealing a grizzled man with haunted eyes. Sheriff Hawkins? I asked, extending my hand. I'm Samantha Ellis, a podcaster investigating the disappearances in Whispering Pines. He studied me for a long moment before nodding and inviting me inside. The cabin was cluttered with old newspapers and maps, the walls covered in strange symbols and sketches of a creature that looked all too familiar. I know why you're here, he said, his voice gruff. You want to know about the Wampus Cat? I nodded, my heart pounding in my chest. Hawkins sighed and sank into a worn armchair, motioning for me to sit. He began to tell me his story, his eyes distant as he spoke. I was like you once, he said. I thought I could solve the case, bring those people home. But the deeper I dug, the more I realized that there are some things in this world that can't be explained by rational means. He pulled out a battered journal from a drawer and handed it to me. This belonged to a Cherokee elder who lived in these parts a long time ago. He wrote about the Wampus Cat, about its origins and the curse that binds it to the land. I flipped through the pages, my eyes widening as I read the ancient tales of a woman who had been transformed into a monster, doomed to stalk the forests for eternity. The Elder wrote of a hidden cave system deep in the woods, a place where the Wampus Cat was said to dwell. I found the caves, Hawkins said, his voice barely above a whisper. And I saw things, things that no man should ever see. He fell silent, his gaze haunted. I pressed him for more information, but he just shook his head. Some secrets are best left buried, Miss Ellis. Trust me on that. As I left the cabin, my mind reeling with the new information, I knew what I had to do. I had to find those caves to see for myself what lurked within. But as I stepped into the shadows of the trees, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was walking into something far more dangerous than I had ever imagined. The journal felt heavy in my hands, the weight of its secrets pulling me deeper into the mystery. I knew I was close to the truth, but the closer I got, the more I feared what I might find. The Wampus Cat was out there, waiting in the darkness, and I was about to come face to face with the legend itself. Armed with the knowledge from the Cherokee Elder's journal, I set out to find the hidden caves. The morning air was crisp and cool as I hiked deeper into the woods, the trees towering above me like silent sentinels. The further I went, the more I felt like I was being watched, as if the forest itself was alive and aware of my presence. After hours of searching, I stumbled upon a narrow opening in the hillside almost entirely concealed by dense underbrush. My heart raced as I realized I had found the entrance to the cave system. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what lay ahead, and stepped into the darkness. The caves were damp and musty, the air heavy with the scent of earth and decay. I switched on my flashlight, the beam cutting through the gloom. The walls were covered in ancient symbols and drawings, similar to the ones I had seen in Hawkins' cabin. I moved deeper into the labyrinth, my footsteps echoing in the stillness. 
As I turned a corner, my blood ran cold. There, scattered on the ground, were personal belongings. A tattered backpack, a shattered cell phone, a torn piece of clothing. They were the remnants of the missing people, the ones who had vanished without a trace. My mind reeled with the implications, the realization that I was standing in the lair of the Wampus Cat. Suddenly, a low growl echoed through the caves, sending shivers down my spine. I spun around, my flashlight darting wildly, searching for the source of the sound. And then I saw it, a pair of glowing eyes in the darkness, watching me from the shadows. The creature emerged slowly, its form unlike anything I had ever seen. It was a twisted amalgamation of human and feline features, its skin stretched taut over a skeletal frame. The wampus cat let out a snarl, its razor-sharp claws gleaming in the dim light. I ran, my heart pounding in my ears as I navigated the twisting tunnels of the cave system. The creature pursued me, its heavy footfalls and guttural growls growing closer with each passing second. I could feel its hot breath on the back of my neck, the stench of death and decay filling my nostrils. Just as I thought all hope was lost, I saw a glimmer of light ahead. The exit. With a final burst of energy, I lunged towards the opening, scrambling up the rocky incline and bursting out into the daylight. I collapsed onto the forest floor, gasping for air my body trembling with fear and exhaustion. As I looked back at the cave entrance, I caught a final glimpse of the wampus cat, its eyes burning with an ancient hatred. It let out a chilling howl before retreating into the depths, vanishing once more into legend. I stumbled back to my motel room, my mind reeling from the encounter. I had seen the truth behind the disappearances, the terrifying reality of the wampus cat. But now I faced a new challenge, convincing the world that the legend was real and that the creature still lurked in the shadows of whispering pines. Back in my motel room, I paced back and forth, my mind racing with the events of the past few hours. I had seen the wampus cat with my own eyes, felt the terror of its presence, and discovered the grim fate of the missing people. I knew I had to share my findings with the world, to warn them about the danger that lurked in the forests of Whispering Pines. I set up my recording equipment and took a deep breath, trying to compose myself. I hit the record button and began to speak, my voice trembling slightly as I recounted my experiences. This is Samantha Ellis, and you're listening to a special episode of Shadows in the Dark. I'm coming to you from the small town of Whispering Pines, North Carolina, where I've been investigating a series of mysterious disappearances. But what I've uncovered here is far more terrifying than I could have ever imagined. I told my listeners about the Wampus Cat, the legendary creature that had been stalking the woods for centuries. I described my encounters with the locals, the retired sheriff, and the Cherokee Elder's Journal. And then, I revealed the truth about the hidden caves and the fate of the missing people. I know it sounds impossible, like something out of a horror movie, but I assure you, the wampus cat is real. I've seen it with my own eyes, and I've witnessed the terror it unleashes. The authorities need to take action to warn the public and protect the innocent. We cannot let this creature claim any more victims. As I finished my recording, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. I had done my part, shared the truth with the world. But even as I uploaded the episode, I couldn't shake the feeling that my ordeal was far from over. 
The next morning I awoke to a flood of messages and comments on my podcast page. But to my dismay, most of them were filled with skepticism and ridicule. People accused me of fabricating the story, of exploiting local legends for my own gain. Even the authorities dismissed my claims, chalking up the disappearances to animal attacks and lost hikers. I felt a sense of despair wash over me, the realization that I had risked everything to uncover the truth, only to be met with disbelief and mockery. I knew I couldn't stay in whispering pines any longer, not with the weight of my knowledge bearing down on me. As I packed my bags and prepared to leave, I couldn't shake the feeling that the wampus cat was still out there, waiting in the shadows. I had escaped its clutches once, but I knew that others might not be so lucky. The legend of the wampus cat would continue to haunt the forests of whispering pines, and I could only hope that someday, someone would believe my story and take action to stop the creature once and for all. With a heavy heart, I climbed into my car and began the long drive home, the memories of my encounter with the wampus cat forever etched into my mind. I knew that I would never forget the horrors I had witnessed in Whispering Pines, and that the shadows in the dark would always be a part of me. As I drove away from Whispering Pines, the mountains and forests slowly fading in my rearview mirror, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled deep in my bones. The encounter with the wampus cat had changed me, left me questioning everything I thought I knew about the world. The rational part of my mind still struggled to come to terms with what I had seen. A creature of legend, a monster straight out of folklore, had turned out to be all too real. And yet, the evidence was undeniable. The scratches on my car, the personal belongings in the caves, and the terrifying encounter that would forever haunt my dreams. I thought about the people of Whispering Pines, the families of the missing, and how they deserve to know the truth. But I also knew that the truth was a heavy burden to bear, one that could shatter the fragile peace of the town and plunge it into chaos and fear. As the miles ticked by, my phone buzzed with an incoming call. It was Sheriff Harding, his voice tight with tension. Miss Ellis, he said, his words measured and careful. I just got word of another disappearance. A group of hikers, last seen on the trails near the caves. My heart sank, a cold realization washing over me. The wampus cat was still out there, still claiming victims, and I had walked away, leaving the town to its fate. I'm sorry, Sheriff, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. I wish I could do more, but I don't think anyone will believe me, not after the response to my podcast. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. I believe you. He said finally, his voice heavy with exhaustion. I've seen things out there, things I can't explain. But you're right, people won't listen. They never do. We said our goodbyes, and I tossed the phone onto the passenger seat, my mind reeling. I knew I would have to live with the knowledge of what I had seen, the burden of the truth that no one else would accept. As I sped down the highway, putting more and more distance between myself and whispering pines, I couldn't shake the feeling that my journey was far from over. The wampus cat had become a part of me, a shadow that would forever lurk in the corners of my mind. And deep down, I knew that I would never be able to truly leave whispering pines behind. The town and its secrets would always call to me drawing me back into the darkness that lay hidden in the heart of the mountains. For now, all I could do was keep moving forward, keep telling my story, 
and hoped that someday someone would listen. The legend of the Wampus Cat would continue, and I knew that I would forever be a part of it, a lone voice crying out in the wilderness, warning of the dangers that lurked in the shadows of the forest. As the sun began to set behind the mountains, casting long shadows across the highway, I took a deep breath and focused on the road ahead. The Wampus Cat may have won this battle, but I knew that the war was far from over. And I would keep fighting, keep searching for the truth, until the shadows in the dark were finally brought to light. 